So here we are on February 8th. This is batch 25. Um, this was brewed. About 36 hours ago. This is a double, I will call it an Imperial IPA. Uh, it's an extract kit. It's actually a partial mash kit, but we added an extra pound and a half of oats to it. This one is fermenting at room temperature. If you can't tell here. It's using an Omega OYL. 071 yeast. Um, this is an experimental batch, as they all are. What we did is I mashed this for about an hour uh, before we added the rest of the malt extract. And then um, we amped it up a little bit with a couple extra pounds of some light and some dark DME to make it a really full colored. IPA. Um, it'll have a nice dry taste afterwards. It'll be very hoppy. So this is, uh, like I said, fermenting at room temperature inside. It's a little too cold for the garage, even in the boiler room. Right now, this has been going like gangbusters. This fermenter, the blow-off, um, the airlock, I just cleaned it and replaced it. It literally shot yeast and hops through the through the airlock a little while ago. I've cleaned it up. Um, it almost happened spontaneously. I was sitting here watching it when it blew off the first time. So this this one I'm expecting to be at least 14%. Um, it should be 12% with the added oats. Without the added oats. Um, I'm assuming a couple pounds of oats will amp it up another percent or two for the ABV. Obviously this yeast the 071 is only uh, capable of 11%, what it says on the package. I'm assuming it's going to ferment a little bit more than that under optimal conditions. This is not 90 degrees in here, as it recommends. Now, I did something of an experiment. What I did is I took the yeast out of the bottom of a couple different batches of low ABV beer I had. Uh, one was the schnozberry wheat. Um, amongst two other low ABV batches. Another one was a Belgium wheat also that used a Nottingham ale, I think. And I left about an inch of beer in the bottom of those waters with that yeast, and those also went into this wort right after I pitched the yeast. So it's got three or four different yeast samples in here out of uh, a couple different batches of beer that I brewed. I can't remember what the third one was. Next time I do a high ABV beer, I may also add some extra yeast in there. Now I could have made a starter. Um, I realized this at the last minute that I really wanted to amp this up. So in went the yeast from you know, the bottom of a couple very good batches of beer. Uh, it should be perfectly healthy yeast. Those beers poured out nice and heady with a good foam on top, crisp clean taste. So I know the yeast was still alive in the bottom. Give them a good shake, dump the beer into the bucket after I hit it with the, the drill, the paint stirrer. So, this is a good one. Um, once again, the details, uh, just if you want to look at it, that is nowhere near my handwriting. It's not that good. Uh, let's see what happens uh, once this one is up and ready. It's probably going to bubble like this for another week and then it'll calm down at about this temperature and then uh, you know I could potentially bottle it in seven days five days if it keeps going like this I'll probably let it rest for a week uh, for two weeks of fermentation then two weeks in the bottling that's about it happy brewing everyone